This is lecture 18a of differential equations and linear algebra. In lecture 17a, I introduced the idea of the flow of a vector field, a very beautiful and interesting idea. We looked at it in the case of a linear system of differential equations, and we used something called the matrix exponential to help us get the formula for the flow. We'll come back to the matrix exponential in later lectures, but not this lecture. We also looked at a nonlinear example that was partially decoupled. The formula for the flow was very, very complicated. We need, needed Mathematica to help us solve it, but it was very beautiful to visualize. In this lecture, lecture 18a, we want to be more precise about what exactly a flow is and what are its properties. We're going to look at flows and the flow property, also known as the group property, for simpler situations, scalar, first order, order autonomous ODEs, okay? But to get you motivated for all the symbolic algebra we're going to do, that's going to be pretty complicated in this lecture, let me remind you about the geometric meaning of the flow. Remember, this was the partially decoupled nonlinear system from lecture 17a that we looked at. The nonlinearity comes from the cosine. It is partially decoupled because I can just think about the dy dt equation first by itself, solve it and plug that back into the dx dt equation in place of y and try to solve for x. It can be done, but it's really insanely complicated. So, for example, y x is a function of t is this particular function right there where you see x0 and y0 are the fixed initial conditions. You want to think of this initially as a function of t, but then the key idea with a flow is to think of it as think of t as fixed and think of x0 and y0 as the variable and look at what happens to images of sets under the flow, especially something called the time one map. I entered the formula for the flow, and I got a picture like, well, this one right here. So here we see the flow, the phase plane. What you want to imagine is a literal flow. Imagine this is a thin sheet of water, and the water molecules are following the vector field. The red arrows are essentially their velocity vectors. They really end up following the blue curved arrows. Those are really the solution curves. So those blue arrows are the paths of different water molecules as time goes by. What do, what do I have here? Well, in lecture 17, I said, A, I said, pretend it's an oil slick, but let's not uh, think about oil slicks. Let's just imagine it's food coloring that I've spilled in the flow. And I'm wondering what happens to this as time goes by. So for example, as t goes from zero to one, it gets deformed as t increases. And ultimately, when t equals one, it's deformed to this particular set. The original set, which was the unit disk centered at the origin, and this image, this is the image of that set under the flow. Now, this is a nonlinear flow. So it's not like an image of a linear transformation. It's the image of a nonlinear transformation, which is why it looks kind of strange. But it is still kind of interesting to think about, and you do see it following the paths of the water molecules, so to speak. The green line is the x null line. That's where dx dt is 0, and you see solutions crossing vertically. The brown lines, which go on forever, this is, there's infinitely many equilibrium points in black where they intersect. Those are, that's the uh, y null line where dy dt is 0. I did add a little bit more code in this Mathematica notebook here to allow myself a little bit more flexibility to experiment. And for example, I can now click on this and drag the center of the circle, the disk, somewhere else besides where I had it. Let's put it all the way to the left of the green line, actually over here, and I can look at the image under the flow. I can also increase the radius. Let's keep the radius smaller again, back to down close to one. Let's let t increase to one, and now the entire set, it's like it has floated off in that direction. The food coloring has gone off in that direction. Whereas if I had started to the right, it would have been um, gone off to the right. So let's go back here and let t go back to zero and move this thing to the right. And now, as I let t increase, it moves off to the right. Okay? But when it crosses the green line, then part of it moves off to the left and part of it moves off to the right. And again, that should make sense thinking about those solution curves. There we go. There's the image. Said so you'd have to use multivariable calculus to figure out the area. We're not going to do that. But it is certainly interesting to think about. So with that in mind, Try to keep those pictures in mind for the future because in this lecture, 
we are going to get very heavy into symbolic algebra. Lots of very tricky kinds of details. Now, these are important details, so don't ignore them. But you may have to pause the video every once in a while and double check the calculations. So let's consider a simple case. We'll consider our first order linear scalar autonomous ODE. It is going to be non-homogeneous. It's going to be dy dt equals ay plus b. I am implicitly assuming here that a is non-zero for sure. B, well, if it's not homogeneous, then B would be non-zero. Non However, the derivation I'm going to do would give us a solution in the case where, a, where B is zero as well. How do you solve such a scalar autonomous ODE? You either use integrating factors or the method of undetermined coefficients. I've illustrated integrating factors recently. Let's use the method of undetermined coefficients. So what's the associated homogeneous equation? Make B equal to zero. dy dt equals just A times Y. Then go ahead and solve that. You could use separation of variables, but you don't have to. Remember, I've emphasized this example a lot. It's an exponential solution. YH, H standing for homogeneous, is an arbitrary constant times e to the AT. If I was only thinking about this particular equation, the arbitrary constant would be the initial condition. But I'm not only thinking about this equation. I'm thinking about the original non-homogeneous equation. What's a particular solution? That's where we need the method of undetermined coefficients. Um, we're looking for a function, really, whose derivative, if I write this in linear operator form, dy dt minus a times the function itself is the constant b for all t. Well, if you think about it a little bit, the function would have to be a constant function, the particular solution that we're after. Let's just call it yp equals k. This is thought of as being a function of t. I could put the of t in here, but I'm not bothering with it. But let me just remind you, I'm thinking of this as a constant function of time. I'd like to see what value of k will make this a solution of the non-homogeneous equation. Its derivative is always 0, so then if I plug it into the right-hand side of the non-homogeneous equation, I replace yp with just a k, I set this equal to 0, and solve for k, and get k equal to negative b over a. So yp is the constant function, negative b over a. That actually should make sense if you think about phase lines. Remember, we've talked about phase lines before. This right-hand side function here, this f of y, when you try to look for equilibrium points on phase lines, you set it equal to 0 and solve for y, and you get y equals negative b over a. The particular solution right here, this constant function of t, whose graph is a horizontal line, is the equilibrium solution, and on the phase line it would correspond to the equilibrium point. Would it be a sink or a source? That would depend on the value of a, I hope you realize, whether a is positive or negative. That's going to determine whether this is a sink or a source. What's the general solution now of the original non-homogeneous equation and the unique solution of a generic IDP where y of 0 equals y sub 0, that's what I always mean when I'm talking about generic initial value problems, thinking of y sub 0 as fixed. You need to add yh and yp to get the general solution with an arbitrary c. There we have it right there. There's the general solution of the non-homogeneous equation. But now we want a unique solution of the generic IVP. I want to solve for c to make this happen, where y sub 0 is fixed. So go ahead and plug in y sub 0 for y and t equals 0 e to the 0, like always, is equal to 1. So this simplifies to c minus b over a, which is what you see there. Now add b over a to both sides, and you've got the value of c, once you have the initial value of y. Now go ahead and substitute that back into this equation right there. That's what we get right here. And I can call this a solution function of the original non-homogeneous equation. y equals phi sub y 0 of t. I've used this notation a lot. Right? This is the solution function's name, phi. The subscript y0 just emphasizes what the initial value of y is when t is 0. It's this, okay? which is, again, the same as this, where I'm replacing c by that, okay? in terms of y0. That is a function of t. And it does solve the differential equation. You can check it. It's derivative. 
when you find it and simplify, will also always equal for all t a times the function itself plus b. You can check that. It also satisfies the initial condition. If you plug in t equals 0, you get e to the 0 is 1. You get y0 plus b over a minus b over a. The b over a's cancel, leaving you with just a y0. What is the corresponding flow, which is really defined to be the family of flow maps? Okay? All this is here initially is just a change in perspective. I'm going to take this exact same equation. I'm going to call the function something different. It's still going to be, it's still going to be a fee, but it's a fancy fee. Maybe you would call it a cursive fee. And I'm going to think of t as fixed and y0 as the variable. Can I do that? Sure. Why? I can do lots of things in math. I can think of something as a constant. I can think of it as a variable. It's all a matter of perspective. And different perspectives can be helpful. So that's what I do here. The time t flow map, time t flow map for any fixed t, I'm denoting by phi superscript t of y0. It's the exact same formula as what you see there. These match. However, it's just a change in perspective. I think of t as fixed, and my variable now is this y0. It's hard to get y0 being the fixed number out of your head. Maybe I should just call it y, and, and I could if I wanted to. And if we expand this out, if I multiply the e to the at through here, and put what's next to y0 just next to it by itself, this is essentially a, a linear function of y0 with a slope of e to the at, that would be its slope, and a vertical intercept equal to that thing. I put linear in quotes because this is not a linear transformation because we've got this constant here. It would have to be zero for it to be a linear transformation in the sense of linear algebra. But it is a linear function in the sense that you learned in pre-calculus and calculus. Its graph as a function of y0 would be a straight line. Yes, a straight line with, again, this slope right there for fixed t, e to the at would be the slope, and this thing would be the vertical axis intercept. Hmm. You can certainly change your perspective on things, but is it useful? Is it beneficial? That's what we want to find out now. Well, let's look at an example. Let's take a, b, <clears throat> 1, b to b, 1, and let's look at the time 1 flow map. t is 1. That's the most common flow map to look at, but you can look at any t if you want. So I'm just going to plug in a bunch of 1s in for a, b, and t. What do I get? I get this here initially when I match it with uh, this form right here. b over a would be 1, here and here. A times T would be 1 times 1 is 1. The only thing that's the variable is the Y0. And if I want to think of it in this form, it expands out to this. E would be the slope of this function, and E minus 1 would be the intercept. This function of Y0 has approximate slope 2.71828 and approximate vertical intercept 1.71828 if I graphed it. And I, I probably will graph it, just not in this lecture. Question, though, is this worthwhile? What would make it worthwhile? Does the behavior of the solution of the difference equation, not differential equation, which, which difference equation? This one, right there. Look what I've done here. I'm looking at the time one map. T is one. And instead of putting a y0 in there, y equals v1 of y0, I made it yn equals v1 of yn minus 1, a recursive equation, a difference equation. What is the behavior of the solution? We want to relate differential equations and difference equations in this course. There are plenty of relationships. This is one of them. With that difference equation, with this same initial condition as the differential equation, will it mirror the behavior of the solution of the IVP? the same one where I replaced A with 1 and B with 1 right there. And Y of 0 equals Y sub 0. What do I mean to mirror it? What would that possibly mean? That's what we want to explore a little bit. But I claim is, yes, it does mirror it in a very precise way, actually. Let's check it out and see. Let's, let's solve the difference equation and see what happens. Is this difference, equ difference equation solvable? I should probably write it on the board here. 
So again, we're trying to solve this difference equation, y sub n equals the time one flow map of y sub n minus 1, where the time one flow map, we are doing a equals 1, b equals 1, and t equals 1, that's the time one flow map, as a function of y0 is e times y0 plus e minus 1. Keep that in mind here. Okay, these calculations are going to get kind of tricky. We actually did this before, this kind of thing, back maybe in lecture two, two or three. We solved the linear difference equation and we needed geometric series. We actually don't need geometric series in this case because some stuff cancels out, essentially. What was our goal here? Our goal is to write yn in terms of y0, in terms of the initial condition. To solve the difference equation, we just iterate. We keep using the flow map over and over again. yn is the flow map at time one, time one flow map of yn minus one. And yn minus one would be the time one flow map of yn minus two. This is a, this is a yn minus one right here. Sorry. This thing right here is yn minus one. Using the formula for phi u1, time one map, that's over on the board there. I'm replacing y0 with y n minus 1 here. And again, replacing y n minus 1 with the time one flow map applied to y n minus 2. That whole thing is y n minus 1. Go ahead and use the formula again. What do I get? I've replaced this phi 1 of y n minus 2 with this entire thing. Replace the y0 with that entire thing. Because yn minus 2 is being plugged into phi 1. But I still have the e over here and the e minus 1 over there. They match there. Now simplify a little bit. Multiply the e through the parentheses here. I'm going to get an e squared yn minus 2. I'm also going to get, um, let's see here, an e squared um, minus e, e times the minus 1 there plus e minus 1, the minus e that I get from e times negative 1 cancels with the plus e there. So this simplifies to e squared y n minus 2 plus e squared minus 1. The e squared minus 1 over here comes from this times this, and the minus 1 there uh, comes from that. The terms that I get again when I multiply e times negative 1 and the e there, they cancel. All right, keep going. Replace yn minus 2 with phi 1 of yn minus 3. Woohoo! Fun, fun, fun. Right there. Replace that with this. Plug yn minus 3 into the phi 1 function, the time 1 map. Simplify. You get this. Is there a pattern? There seems to be. Boom, boom, boom. It seems like if we keep going, well, the power of the E is the same as the number we subtract from N down there. So we should get, if we want a Y0 here, that's N minus N, we should get E to the Nth power there. And it seems to be the same power of E here, E to the Nth, and we still have a minus 1. Okay, that's, that's the solution of the difference equation. This difference equation right here, where Phi1's formula is this. Involves a y0 there, but I, I can just get rid of the subscript if I want to. This is the function that I'm iterating. If I were to do this on Mathematica, I'd use nest list. Or we will, you'd look at Mathematica again at the end. Okay, how's this related to the differential, differential equation? Remember, the solution of the differential equation, I'm thinking of y0 is fixed and t is the variable. However, here I'm plugging in t equals n and seeing what happens. The formula for the solution of the differential equation was this with a t instead of an n, but now replace t with n. Simplify, and lo and behold, they match these two things. Huh, that's interesting. Or is it, maybe is that obvious that that would happen? I hope. I would say it's not obvious that it would happen. 
We'll give some visual reasons for why it happened in the next lecture or two. Symbolically it happened. We'll see it, it, it actually doesn't work for non-autonomous equations. It's the fact that the equation is autonomous that makes the match happen. We will see. This type of thing actually works for all autonomous ODEs. Even nonlinear ones, and we're about to look at a nonlinear example. However, I should say, with a caveat, the nonlinear examples uh, get extra tricky, especially with regard to the domains. Because what can happen with solutions of nonlinear differential equations is they can very easily have vertical asymptotes. They can go off to infinity, blow up in, in finite time, and that can cause issues, that can cause trouble. But we're not really going to worry about that too much. We just want to see that the symbols work out, the algebra works out. Why did it happen? And what is, what is happening here? Why? It's based on what I call the flow property, also known as the group property of flows of autonomous ODEs. Okay, you can look these things up, flow property, group property. They are out there on the internet. For, in general, it's for an autonomous system of ODEs, a, a vector field, you might say, that doesn't change over time. There we go with the vacuum. Okay, stay with me here. What is, what is this property that I'm referring to? Uh, it says for appropriately chosen times S and T, the following equation is true. Can I get rid of this here? This one here. The time S flow map composed with the time T flow map is the same as the time S plus T flow map. Hmm, it's like we added the exponents. It's an exponent-like property. Is it, is it really an exponent? No, these are not really exponents because this circle is not multiplication. It's function composition. But it's like exponents. It's acting like an exponent because I can add the exponents. And by the way, the fact that exponent addition S plus T is commutative and equals T plus S. This would also equal phi T plus S, which will also equal the time T map composed with the time S map. So in fact, for these flow maps, composition is commutative. That's not true in general for function composition. It's not true for the composition of linear transformations in general. But it is evidently for these flow maps. Interesting and possibly useful. Here's the verification that this worked for our example. This is extra tricky. Go ahead and do the composition here. As time S flow map composed of the time T flow map, plug in an arbitrary value of Y0. What does that mean? It means time S map applied to the time T map of Y0. Or if you prefer, you work from inside out. Plug Y0 into the time T map, get a number, plug that number into the time S map. We want to simplify the formula for this, okay? Well, this part inside right here is the time S, the time T map. It matches the solution of the differential equation. These two things match, except with a T instead of an N. Because back, I'm thinking of T here as an arbitrary real number. Back up in here, I was thinking of N as being a fixed positive integer. Or, in a degree of an equal to zero. But it's the same expression. That is what this thing is right there. I'm plugging that into the time S map in place of what? Well, what is the time S map? It's the same function with an S in place of the N. Y zero is the variable, remember. The B and the A and the S in this case are all constant. It's the y0 that needs to get replaced with this entire expression. And also have an e to the a s out there. And that's exactly what I have right um, here. This is, this is what I circled here. These match. Comparing these two, this entire thing that I've boxed is going in place of the y0. Then I have a plus b over a. And then I have an e to the a. Uh, that's a, Typo there. 
Oh, I, I did some typos here. Okay, this should be an e to the at here. That's an at. And this should be an e to the as here. That's an as. Okay. The typos. But it doesn't affect the final answer because now when I simplify, uh, the minus b over a and plus b over a cancel. And then you can multiply the e to the as and the e to the at and get e to the a s plus t. That is a property of exponents. That's actual exponentiation there because it's e to a power. Minus b over a. And that, compare this with this, except replace the n with s plus t, they match. That is the same as the time s plus t map applied to y0. Okay? So just remember, these were typos here and here. Hopefully I'll remember to fix it before I put this in the Google Drive. Those are typos, but the final conclusion still holds. Okay, kind of wild. I said it applies to nonlinear ODEs as well. Let's consider an example like that. How about the logistic model with K and L both equaling 1? Remember, K was the relative percent rate of growth when the population is small. L is the carrying capacity. Technically, they have different units, but I'm assigning them the same numerical value. L might be in thousands of bunnies, and K would be a percent rate of growth when the population is small. Here it is, just to simplify the equation a bit. The y equals y times in parentheses 1 minus y, which if you expand it is y minus y squared. And um, what we want to do, we want to solve this and think about the flow and the flow, flow property. The unique solution of the generic IVP with y of 0 equals y sub 0 is this. We actually did derive this before <clears throat> for a slightly different example. I think I took k to be 0 0.04. L might have still been 1. This is the unique solution of the corresponding initial value problem. Excuse me. Where y of 0 equals y sub 0. Check it. Take the time. Pause the video. Check that this works. It solves the differential equation. You take its derivative and simplify. You get the same thing as if you take this function and replace it in place of the y here and here and simplify. <clears throat> You'll have to add subtract fractions by getting a common denominator, for example. You should get the same thing. It also easily, is easily seen to satisfy the initial condition. E to the 0 is 1. So the bottom becomes one, y0 plus 1 minus y0. The y0s cancel. I am left with y0 over 1, which is y0 when t equals 0. All right, now we want to think about the flow and the flow maps. Just change your perspective. Take the exact same equation and just think of it differently. These expressions here and here are the exact same thing. Here, this is a solution of the differential equation. I'm thinking of y0 is fixed. I'm thinking of t as the variable. If you graph it, it's a function of t, t horizontal, y vertical. Here, I'm thinking of t as fixed and y0 is the variable. It's a function of y0. If I were to graph this, I want to label the horizontal axis with y0. Yeah, that's what you would want to do. If you plug in a particular value of t, again, the most common one being t equals 1, you can simplify it. Here's an approximate that, uh, formula for the time 1 map. e to the negative 1 is about 0.368. There, that's approximately e to the negative 1. And the 0 0.632 is approximately 1 minus e to the negative 1. And you replace t with 1 and do a little simplification. You get this rational function of y0. Okay? And, and the uh, key property is going to be that when we define the corresponding difference equation using the time 1 flow map, solutions of the difference equation are going to correspond to solutions of the differential equation that relate. Is the flow property satisfied though first? We should double check that. Here is the calculation. <clears throat> Same calculation as before, different formula, so the details are different. Hopefully no typos this time. Uh, time s flow map composed of the time t flow map evaluated at y0 is this, the s, v, t of y0, just like before, plug in the 
the formula for phi t of y0, so these two things match right there. And then again, this is the trickiest part right here next. I want to take that whole thing and plug it into the time s flow map formula, which is the same formula that you see up there, except with an s in place of the t. And that looks like I did not make a typo this time. And what that means when I plug this entire thing in place of y0, I have to plug it in three spots. Here, here, and here in place of y0. I did that. Here, here, and here. And yes, I have an e to the negative s there. Wow. Fractions within fractions. What fun. Okay, simplify it. How can I simplify it? Um, I could combine these fractions and multiply, uh, you know, divide fractions by multiplying by the reciprocal at the bottom, but it's easier to just multiply by this common denominator, y0 plus, in parentheses, 1 minus y0 times e to the negative t that you see all these places. And if you do so, it simplifies to this right here. Double check that a bunch of stuff cancels. The 1 needs to get multiplied by that as well. 1 times this entire thing is what you see right here. That part. Then you get some cancellation. The y zeros cancel here and here. They get you to this. And then now the e to the negative t and e to the negative s can be combined to an e to the negative s plus t in parentheses. That is exponentiation and uh, property of exponents. And, but this final thing is the same as this. It worked. How? This matches this. Whoops. Excuse me. Said that wrong. Ah. I didn't mean to say that. I meant to say this matches this. That's the flow property. If I write the composition without Symbols, it's this kind of thing, except with the S and T switched. Okay. Therefore, just as before, the solution of the difference equation, yn equals time one flow map applied to yn minus one, which can be written like that. T is one, so I'm replacing T with one there. Replacing the y zero with yn minus one. With initial condition y zero will be the solution of the differential equation right up here, plug in t equals n. This matches, um, this will equal yn, is what I should say. The solution of the difference equation. That, again, is happening with these autonomous equations. It doesn't happen this way with the non-autonomous equations which we are now going to look at. This is the last means slide, then we'll look at some Mathematica. We'll look at, we looked at a visual earlier, we'll look at some symbol pushing in Mathematica after this slide. The flow property does not work for non-autonomous equations. And the sake of, for sake of time, I'm gonna go through this pretty quick. You should pause and double check things. For example, it does not work for non-constant pure antiderivative problems. Or the right-hand side is an f of t, for example, 2t, if it were just a constant, that's actually technically autonomous as well. But here I made it depend on t. You can still write the formula. You can still say, hey, this is my solution as a function of t for initial condition y0. You can double check this. The derivative of this is 2t derivative with respect to t. And the initial condition is y0. When you plug in t equals 0, you get y0. And I can still call that the time t flow map applied to y0 if I wanted to. And it would be a linear function of y0 when t is fixed. It would be a constant plus y0. But the flow property, the group property, doesn't work. I'll show you why. What do we get? When we compose this function with this function, I'm, I'm hesitating to call these flow maps, even though I still could, because the flow property is not going to work. I'm just saying these are functions I'm just defining. 
This thing right here is the same as that. I'm plugging that into this function, which means it's playing the role of y0 over here, and the s is playing the role of t, so I get s squared plus the constant. But when you have the time be s plus t applied to y0, this function applied to y0, compare, it's the s plus t that's playing the role of t. So the entire s plus t is quantity needs to be squared plus y0. You expand it out. You get this extra term in there that prevents this function from equaling that function. They're both still linear functions of y0. <clears throat> they both still have graphs that are straight lines with a slope of 1, in fact, because the coefficient of y0 is 1. But the vertical intercepts are different. That doesn't match that because this extra 2st in there. It's almost like we just barely missed it because of the extra 2st, but it is enough to mess it up. The flow property does not work. How about a mixed ODE, where the right-hand side has both t and y, like this one? 2ty, that's my f of t comma y. My right-hand side function is mixed. This is pretty easy to solve as well. You can separate variables and get your solution to be this function of t. That solves the differential equation. By the way, the flow map doesn't solve the differential equation because t is fixed and y0 is the variable. You, you can still differentiate it with respect to y0, but it doesn't solve the differential, differential equation. Lots of subtle things to really keep track of here conceptually. Very important. And again, I could, I could also call it this if I wanted to. There's nothing stopping me from using that notation. It just doesn't satisfy the flow property, and so I think I don't want to call it a flow because flow should satisfy the flow property. And let's verify that it doesn't work. <clears throat> Once again, I compose. You should double check all this. You get this in the end. We do end up adding those exponents, s squared and t squared. However, but when I do this one, I get that. Uh, once again, has just this extra thing messing it up. The 2st in there is the thing that's preventing, ah, preventing this expression from equaling that expression. Okay. Again, they're both functions of y0. They, in fact, they both have a, um, are straight lines, linear functions of y0. They have the same vertical intercept, no vertical intercept of 0, in fact, but they have different slopes. These e expressions would be the slopes of the graphs of y0 if you graph, if you graph these functions of y0. One more example. Another mixed one, dy t equals 3t squared over 2y. If you separate variables, and if you assume y0 is positive, you get this solution right here. Uh, if y0 is negative, you need to have a negative sign in front of there, because you end up taking a plus or minus square root. And again, I could use this notation still, but it doesn't satisfy the flow property. see here. This does not equal this, which I re-emphasize down there with the not equal to sign. Okay? So you take the time to double check all these things. And let's just end then by verifying in Mathematica the flow property works for the autonomous examples. Mathematica is great for graphs. It's also great for symbolic calculations. So, you know, if I were to do this completely by computer, this is the linear example. The right-hand side function is ay plus b. Putting it into d solve value for an arbitrary initial condition and getting this function. I can copy and paste this thing. It's the same as we saw on the PowerPoint. Right over here, I'm defining my flow in Mathematica with the curvy phi here. I could not make the t a, a superscript over here. I mentioned this in lecture 17a because Mathematica ends up thinking of it as a power and I don't want to think of it as a power, so I put it directly above the phi. The underscores are necessary in defining this thing. As far as Mathematica concerns, it's got, is concerned that it's got four variables, t, a, b, and y0. But in my mind, I'm thinking of y0 as being the only variable. 
Answer that. You can both simplify phi s plus t and the composition time s flow map with the time t flow map, and you get the exact same thing. These are the exact same expression, so mathematics is symbolically verifying that they're equal. You can also look, for example, at the time one flow map when a and b are one to get this. That can be expanded. You can double check that these are the same answers that we had in the PowerPoint. Uh, for a general A and B, you can look at the time one map and get that. You can solve for a fixed point of the time one map. What input gives you the same output? That's what a fixed point is. It's analogous to an equilibrium point for differential equations. And in fact, the fixed point of the time one map is the exact same thing as the equilibrium point of the differential equation. If I solve for where the input of the time one map equals the output of the time one map, y0 being the input and v1 of y0 being the output, solve for y0, I get negative b over a. Hey, that looks familiar. Yeah, that's the same as the equilibrium point for the differential equation on the phase line. And you can solve the difference equation if you like and see that it gives you the same thing. This, this thing here, I'm using our solve value. You can see solving this difference equation. I'm plugging in A equals 1, B equals 1, and T equals 1. And we saw that this was the difference equation ultimately. And you can see that this thing here matches, um, I thought I had it matching something. Should match. Um, maybe I forgot. Should match the solution of the difference, the difference the differential equation when a is one and b is one, and time is n. So I'm using the flow as a solution of the difference, differential equation as well. Thinking of t now as a variable, and you get the exact same thing. That's the a key consequence of the flow property is that the solution of the difference equation where you iterate the time one map matches the solution of the differential, differential equation when you plug in t equals n. Here's from the non-autonomous example. This is the logistic model. The, I can verify it satisfies the differential equation. I can define the flow map. And I can simplify. I can see that the flow property is satisfied. These two things match here. And I can iterate the time one map. The nest list does the iteration. And notice something interesting. These numbers are approaching one. Remember, there were two equilibrium points for the logistic model at zero and one. And the one at one was, as solutions go toward it, it was a sink as time increases. That's related to the fact that these numbers are heading toward one. It is. OK? So I hope you were able to pay attention OK. Lots of details that are hard to get your mind around. We'll continue talking about this in lectures to come to reinforce all these ideas. Thanks for watching.